praise your name, I will praise your name. When times of need carry on, I will praise your name, I will praise your name. Though darkness falls all around, I will praise your name, I will praise your name. If I forget. Praise your name For you are faithful Lord, you lift my head You're my provider You're my strength And joy I'll trust Let Lord Jesus Christ shine forth. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are joining us, welcome to another live stream with DCCI Ministries. Um, right now, I do have someone on the line. I will be asking you to um, please just hold that until we do introductions. So I hope that's okay with you. Um, tonight, we will be talking about preservation of the Quran in a sense. What is it in eternal tablets? We will be going just going through a very very short video and for me to do that we do have brother jay apologetics on the line peace of christ be with you brother hey sister peace of christ be with you and peace of christ be with the audience um how are you doing brother 
I'm doing great. Thank you, sister. I always love being on the show with you. So having a great day. How are you doing? Since since you are the, one of the most polite guests, <laughs> we, we, we love to have you, brother. Um, <laughs> I, I'll just do a quick chat with you in a bit. But we just okay. we, as we were starting, we've got someone on the line. If that's okay with you, I'll just take him. With the intention, our topic tonight is the preservation of the Quran. And also this, like what is it in the eternal tablets? Let's say hi to our guest. Um, hello, sir. I'll just unmute you. Hello, sir. So I can see you are able to hear me. So you're talking to me. Yes, sir. Can you tell us who are you? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, my name is Peter. I've been to uh, Speaker's Corner twice, and I'm doing a J. Uh, Smith course. Okay. Sir, are you Christian? Are you Muslim? No, no. I'm a Christian. Okay. No, can, a... can you be kind enough and tell us that uh, Jesus is the eternal Son of God and Muhammad is false prophet? Totally, yeah. Jesus is definitely the son of God and Muhammad is definitely a false prophet. Okay. Um, so, sir, we are talking about, um, we will be talking about the preservation of the Quran and what is in the eternal tablets. Um, we just started. Uh, why don't you kind of express to us why did you call in? Well, actually, I would just say, uh, I've been subscribing to DCCI for a couple of weeks and I just press a few buttons on my phone and saw the invite so actually i wasn't planning to join tonight by okay accident. <laughs> okay that's by accident, fine I that's fine in. so you called him by accident and just be where well, oh. you are in live stream right now um yeah. okay so do you want me to kick you out or since you are in would you like to tell us what do you uh, what do you think about the preservation of the quran before i kick you out um, I know very little about it, but I, th I think the Quran is just a, a hodgepodge of all kinds of text that are sort of put together. Um, I think also it takes a lot of effort to be intelligent and knowledgeable to be able to prove that it's just a load of rubbish, basically. But I don't believe any at all that the Quran is it's not definitely not God's word. It's completely different from the scriptures. So, uh, yeah for me it's a sham okay okay so thank you in that case thank you very much for sharing um, your thoughts with us as well as calling in since you called in by mistake into the live stream i'll just kick you out if that's okay that's fine thank you very much okay god, god bless you brother well that those happens um you can simply call in by mistake <laughs> into the live stream um anyway so Brother Jai, um, uh, what have you been doing recently, brother? Um, recently, uh, recently, uh, I, I've been kind of keeping focus on studies relating to textual criticism with the Bible and as well Islamic uh, Quranic textual criticism. So kind of just keeping myself up to date in both areas uh, and uh, trying to keep a uh, a balance between not studying Islam too much. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes it can consume you a little bit and it's like so much darkness in Islam. So you really have to be careful with your time and, uh, you know, make sure that you're doing a healthy balance and giving time to the Lord and reading the word and not so much in Islam all the time. Yeah. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, in between uh, these two studies and uh, that's what I've been doing lately. Okay. And um, so tonight we will be talking about the preservation of the Quran and what is in the eternal tablets. Uh, what I did was I put the link to, the, I pinned the link to the chat. So if anyone wants to call in, um, ideally we want Muslims to call in and then make their case. Um, please use that link. That link will take you into the live stream directly. You will be just waiting a little bit until we take you in. Um, like, don't call by mistake. So you use, use that link to uh, call in intentionally. And also, link is also in the description part of the video. So I put it in the two ways, whatever works better. Um, 
brother, do you remember a couple of, I think it, it was over a year ago, there was this big interview which got deleted on the social media. Do you remember that interview? Oh, yeah, I definitely remember that interview. Okay, interview was uh, between Islamic Dawah gangs and Sheikh um, Yasir Kadi. And That's in right, that yeah. interview, there was a gentle question on what would you write into, uh, what is it in the eternal tablets? Right. Yeah, that was one of the questions. That, one of the questions, yeah. One of the questions that, he, you know, he was receiving a lot of push and shoving on and, <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was kind of not clear answer. He simply said, I don't know. It's not easy yes and no answer, I don't know. That interview was, so we are in 2021. That interview was 2020. Yeah, that interview was 2020. And it was 2016 when um, Jay Smith and his team took um, different Arabic Qurans to the speaker's corner. In that occasion, I had only 26 Qurans. Soon after that, right. um, certain Islamic Dawah gangs uh, made a video on simply responding to these different Arabic Qurans. And since the same question in that video comes again, so what is it in these eternal tablets? Um, what is that important question since it's been coming quite a lot, brother? Yeah, and, and the motivation for asking this question is what is on the preserved tablet is because there are so many variants and variations of the Quran. So if there's a preserved tablet, which Quran is written on this preserved tablet? Is there a way we can know? Is there an Islamic answer? Is it all of the versions? Is it is it one version? Is it two? How many? I guess that's kind of the, the question we just want to get an answer to. And depending on who you ask, surprise, surprise, <laughs> you get different answers. So yeah, in, in the occasion uh, that you're talking about, we have uh, two, uh, like you say, the, the Dawa gangs, two members of the gang asking a sheikh and the sheikh is is addressing them answering their question and we'll see what his particular take is on this question yeah so surah 85 verse 22 22 is talking about the preserved tablets so i guess the basic question we are trying to figure out since quran is revealed to uh now this is like muslim comeback quran is revealed in many different ways um, and today we've got many different Qurans. Which version is in that eternal tablets? That's a very basic question. And um, now what we will do is we will have um, Mr. Mohammed Hijab um, is going to ask the similar question to uh, this gentleman who has been identified as someone who memorized the um, 10 different um, Ten different crowds, um, so it's gonna be a little bit uh, uh, not ideal timeline. But yeah, let's start from here. It's very short. Listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. It's the same when you don't understand how the preservation and the Quran, like how the system works. You start thinking, ah. Oh. But once you have in-depth understanding, you learn this book is preserved. How would you go about proving now? We talked about some of the variant readings, all of which are, you say, accepted. All of which the Prophet said it like this, and he said it like that. Allah said it like this, and he said it like that. Because they keep asking the question, so which one is in the preserved tablet? What's the answer to that question? The preserved tablet is that of the unseen, yeah. and we will not be given access to that. Yeah. What is written is the Qur'an. Allah speech when Allah said the Quran, mm. it, He said it in a manner which befits His own majesty and grace. When we said the Quran, it's some manner in which uh, befits our own limitations and imperfections. So when we say something in an accent, mm. Allah is high above that. Mm. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved the Quran in the tablet and He blessed us and honored us with speaking His own speech, mm. with speaking the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you can imagine that. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that's I mean, a very simple way to think about it. It's not something... Yeah, even though it's a bit challenging. <laughs> very okay, simple. Okay. Very yeah. simple it, way to it, think it, about it. It is very simple. Um, <laughs> it is very simple. Um, brother, don't take this personal, but can you be kind enough and then just break that down, break that very simple thing for me? I, I'm yeah. not... Like, it's very simple, but it didn't Definitely. make that much sense to me. 
Nothing yeah. personal. Yeah. So, so, so he's saying, you know, they asked the question. And so the context is when he's saying they, he's referring to the, the Christians at Speaker's Corner, like Sister Hatoon, like Jay Smith, like his team. He's referring to them. And this is, by the way, just, I don't know if we made this clear or not, but this is before the Yasir Qadi, you know, interview. This is some years back. I think it's like 2016. 2016, 20, yes. This is 2016. Yeah, 2016. Okay. So 2016, and so he's asking this question because they're just being hit with all of these different variations in the Quran. This is how one version says it, and this is how another version says it. And by the way, we'll get into specific differences, Lord willing, later on. Uh, we'll get into specific differences between the readings and see how they give different messages. They're, they're not just accents, like you know they like to say. Okay, so he's asking Kim to address that question what is written on the preserved tablet in other words when the christians come to us and they ask us what is written on the preserved tablet is it hafs is it watersh is it a combination and then of course those are just two of the popular ones there's there's a lot more but just first just to give an idea of what what he's getting at and so then he answers the question by saying by saying that the preserved tablet is in the unseen it's in the realm of the unseen and we don't have access to it. <laughs> so he's really saying, we don't know. We don't know. So, so the Christians are asking what's in the preserved tablet. And he's saying, well, we don't know. <laughs> it's in the unseen. We don't, we don't have access to it. So in other words, it's a good question to ask because Muslims don't have an answer to this question. But so that was in 2016. Okay. Even we used yeah, to ask a similar question on the lines of abrogation. Are the abrogated verses are in the eternal tablets or not? The ones right. made it to the Quran and the ones didn't make it to the Quran. Exactly. Um, and and we'll break that down a little bit, sister, because that one is a, it's, it's a really, really good point. But I, I don't know. Uh, so why don't we, uh, can you give an example, sister, of something that Muhammad would have recited as the Quran, but today it doesn't exist in the current Quran because of abrogation. And so then we can reset your question because I think that's a really good one to kind of air out and ask in a, in a yeah, so, ask that, we can ask that question to Muslims, yeah. Yeah, so we do have some verses which were abrogated, yet they are in the Quran. Like, for example, you've got footnotes which says that chap that verse is being abrogated. But there are some verses were abrogated and today they couldn't make into the Quran. For example, adult breast suckling verses or stoning the adulteries. Um, according to tradition, they were abrogated. Therefore, they are not in the Quran. Then I remember asking the question, okay, are they, those abrogated verses, in the preserved tablets, in heavenly tablets? Uh, so whatever answer to that question will be a very similar answer to this question. Something happened. They are not in today's Quran because they are abrogated. Of course, there is a big question on um, if Allah is going to abrogate something at the first place, why he's already revealing um, something similar or something a little bit less than what it's supposed to be? That's like another question. But focus was, are those abrogated verses in the eternal tablets? Yes or no? Um, and then this takes us to in here. So you've got 37 different Arabic Qurans and Islamic tradition is talking about nearly 50 different Arabic Qurans around 900s. And we've got all the names of those Qurans and then certain examples of the variations. Then the, we are asking the question, since Muslims are saying this is all revealed from Allah, which kind of history tells us something else, but which one is in the eternal tablets? Is ma many different version of Surah 1 is in, in the eternal tablets? Or is it only one version of its et eternal tablets? Seems right. that question was bothering Islamic Dawah gangs in two, before 2016 and in 2016. And it continued, and it continued to bother them for the next four years until the famous deleted interview. <laughs> and and, and I, still I, I imagine that today, yeah, it's still bothering. <laughs> so this is the question that they they seem to ask this to all of the sheikhs that they interview, right? There seems to be every sheikh that they interview on this topic, they ask this question. Uh, in some form or another, right? So they ask it to him, and he says, we don't really know. <laughs> we don't really know. So he's not too helpful. And then he asked Yasser Qadi, and he regretted that one. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah. um, okay, 
I, I just want to break that one down. That that one down, though, sister, about the about the abrogation, because this is a, a really great point that you brought up. And to to you know, kind of just repeat what you said. There there are there are verse there there are different types of abrogation according to Islam, and one of the types of abrogation is something that is revealed in the Quran, and then it's practiced in law, and and then Allah abrogates it either for something similar or for something better. And that thing, according to some types of abrogation, it's removed from the Quran. So it's no longer in the Quran anymore. So it's not possible for a Muslim today to say that we have the Quran exactly as Muhammad recited it because we don't have access to those verses that were abrogated. The ones that were in the Quran at one point and then removed due to abrogation. We might have them... We might have knowledge of what they are in practice, like you, like this, like Sister Atun said, the adult breastfeeding or the uh, stoning of adulterer. Uh, th- these th- these verses are in practice, but the the verses in the Quran are no longer there. So a Muslim can't say that they're reciting the Quran exactly as Muhammad said it because we don't have access to that Quran anymore. And the in there, or are they not in there? And according to the Sheikh, according to the Sheikh. What, what did he say? He said that it's the unseen. preserved tablet is that in the unseen. It's in the it's in the unseen. We don't have access to it. We don't have knowledge of it. Okay, I that, see that we have a uh, guest with us. Yeah, um, that means every time when you meet with Muslims, that's one of the questions we will continue to ask since they have got no answer to that. And we do have someone on the line. Um, hello. I'm just going to unmute you. Hello. Sir or ma'am, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, can you tell us who are you? Yeah, uh, my name is John. I am a Christian. Um, John, can you tell us that Jesus is the eternal son of the Father and Muhammad is false prophet? Yes, Jesus is definitely the son of the eternal Father and Muhammad is a false prophet, 100%. Okay, we are talking about the preservation of the Quran and we are asking the question, what is it in that um, preserved tablets which Surah 85 verse 22 is talking about? I'm hearing a little bit echo. Can you please make sure everything is kind of fixed in your sight? Um, uh, yeah, you- I think I, just, I have you on a speakerphone. Like it gave me a cha- choice to do a speakerphone. I think maybe that's why it's a little bit of an echo. Okay, would you be kind enough and then tell us your thoughts on the preserved, um, preserved Quran? Yeah, I, I don't think the Quran is preserved at all. I mean, even according to, uh, let me just see if I can find the verse really quick. Um, Surah 69 verse 40. It says that the Quran is the speech of the messenger. Okay, right? what, what about, what about, what is it in the eternal tablet? So today there are many different physical Arabic Qurans as well mm-hmm. as um, as well as there are the chapters and verses are abrogated from the Quran. What do you think is in the eternal tablet? So why did you call in tonight? Um, truthfully speaking, I don't think there is a, such a thing as the eternal tablet. I mean, even if you listen to Muslims speak, they themselves are in disagreement as to what's in the eternal tablets. Because depending on where you go in the Muslim world, they claim that, say, if you go to Morocco, maybe the Warsh Quran is in the eternal tablets. If you go to Saudi Arabia, maybe it's the Hafs Quran. And they always say to us that our Bible is corrupt, which is funny because the earliest creed that we have is 15 years after the death of Jesus, which is in 1 Corinthians, right? And the Hafs Quran, he came 200 years after Muhammad. And they have a recitation that goes back. It's like the recitation of recitation, like eight times removed, and it goes to Hafs, who is a who is a a liar. So I don't understand how they can accept the Quran from his recitation, supposedly, and they say to us that our Bible is corrupt when they're taking it from a person that was considered a thief by Muslims themselves. Okay, um, Brother Jai, um, have you got anything to make a comment or say? Um, no, I think yeah. um, I think uh, every like if there's but, art- but, but uh, John, just hold on the line. Um, I did uh, address the question to Brother Jai. Um, Jai. 
Yeah, thank you, sister, and uh, welcome, uh, welcome, John. Thank you for joining us. So I don't have much to comment on. Look, I, you I are enjoy so listening polite. to people's. Yeah, I enjoy listening to like people's <laughs> thoughts and ideas. I don't have much to add though. I just want to say though that First uh, Corinthians fifteen. Uh, this is actually earlier than fifteen years. Yeah, um, after three fact, years, yeah, three. Yeah, so, six months or something. So, Right. Thank you. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to add on. But, um, yeah, thank you for sharing the comments. Yeah, we do have tradition on 1 Corinthians 15 regarding to be a uh, six months to uh, three years line. So um, we did have sessions on that. Um, please do go and check that out. Um, so I'm going to unmute you again for you to make your um, conclusions or add anything if you haven't done so. No, um, I think uh, it's awesome. I just wanted to say too, you guys do an awesome job. Um, Hatun, I do listen to you when you're at Speaker's Corner. And I tell my wife all the time, I think you're very brave uh, for for doing what you're doing. Um, it's for the work of Jesus Christ. And like I'm originally born in uh, Pakistan, so we moved here. And honestly, you don't you don't have to have a single knowledge of Islam to be able to destroy it by the way the Muslims treat the Christians in Pakistan. I mean, that shows you what type of religion it is because they they kill Christians, they destroy our churches, they take our homes, they take our daughters, and all, all, all for the sake of this religion called Islam. And if there's any Muslims that are listening, I tell you, use your minds that God has given you and think about, just think about it. Just don't even think about religion, just think about the treatment of people we follow our example is jesus christ your example is muhammad so i i always say please uh you know like look at what jesus has done for you and accept him before it's too late because we only have this one life and it says in the bible once ma once we die then we face our judgment so i hope the people that are listening will give their life to jesus christ because we're not promised tomorrow um, thank you very much, brother, and thank you very much for expressing how uh, Lord Jesus Christ is important. Because, yes, uh, we are not going to live in this world forever. We will be uh, facing eternal world of um, God. We will be facing the Lamb of God. Therefore, we need to be ready. We need to be ready. Um, brother John, thank you very much for calling in. Um, hopefully, we will see you on another different platforms, even at Speaker's Corner. God bless you, brother. Yeah, no, it was it was good. I, it was my it was a lucky day because I just got I just came home from work and I noticed that you were going to be doing a live stream. I try to catch them, but I always miss. Every time I come home, you just finished, and I'm like, I missed it again. But this time I got lucky. So yeah, God bless you both, uh, uh, Sister Atun and Brother Jay. You guys have an awesome day. Thank you very much, uh, brother. God bless you. Um, so we had a um, brother who expressed the um, importance of non-preserved tablets, um, non-preserved Quran. Um, brother Jai, I'm just going to pick this call, but there is a question on the screen. I'm not sure if you are able to see it. If you are okay. able to see the yeah, question. So question is, um, on, other day we were talking about how... Uh, Jin is kind of produced the book like the Quran. So now the question is, um, is the eternal tablets also put together by the jinn? Right. Yeah. So apparently, apparently, um, and this is obviously a, a really funny, funny uh, challenge that the Quran makes. Very funny challenge that the Quran makes in regards to producing something like it. And then when it challenges all humans and it challenges all of the jinn as well, it's challenging them to produce something that they like it's it, Allah's quoting them so much of the quran is Allah quoting people talking to each other so he, he quotes moses speaking to pharaoh and it records moses's words and pharaoh's words and then he quotes the jinn like the jinn said and the jinn said and the jinn and there's a whole chapter called the chapter of the jinn so Allah is challenging us and the jinn to produce something like the quran when He's quoting the jinn and he's quoting humans in his Quran. So it, it, imagine if Allah wanted to quote you and I right now as we're talking to each other. Imagine this. He's, you and I are talking to each other right now and Allah records what we say in the Quran. And then he challenges us to produce something like it. 
um, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But in regards to the preserved tablet, yeah, that's an interesting question. I guess the authorship would have, you know, you, you have to, you know, we don't want to uh, rob people of their, of their, their work, right? We don't want to rob people of, of, of what they say or what they do. So if Allah is quoting the jinn, then you have to attribute some of that authorship to the jinn and the Quran quotes them. So yeah, they have to be in the preserved tablet, I guess. Um, yeah, so, so you need to give so credit when offered, it is necessary. Yeah, you have to give credit to when it's necessary. So when he's quoting the jinn, you know, you have to give the credit to the jinn. So yes, some of the authorship of the preserved tablet is due to the jinn. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you very much for that, brother. Um, also, I must say, um, th that was very nice logo you had, brother. Okay, so we do have someone on the line. Um, let's unmute him or her. Um, can you please stop um, unmuting? Can you please stop muting yourself? I'm just trying to unmute you, and you are muting yourself. Hello. Hello, good evening. Uh, can you speak a little bit louder for me? Uh, hello, good evening. Good evening, sir. I need that a little bit louder and a little bit clearer. That's okay. Hello, hello, good evening. Peace of Christ to you. Okay. Um, you are Christian. Yes, I am a Christian, and uh, Muhammad is a false prophet. And Jesus Christ is the eternal Son of the Father? Absolutely, the Son of God. Okay, um, not sure um, what is kind of, there's something that seems to be very good from your side for the sound, but um, can you tell us who um, you are and what would you like to share with us regarding what is it in the eternal tablets? Right, um, well, basically I'm a Christian and um, regarding the uh, preservation or the eternal tablet, I mean, I understand uh, the position of uh, textual critics and um, and people who have um, interests in this topic, uh, like uh, Brother Jai, uh, but uh, regardless of uh, whether what we can, whether we can know what is in the, in the eternal tablet or not, I mean, if we if we take what the museums say, or what they say at face value, like there is a, there is an eternal tablet, and it's also got what is in the Quran, then I mean, without trying to debunk uh, such claims, it raises a lot of problem for Islam. I think the, the the problem with the preservation or with the eternal tablet is that uh, number one, to me, I would say it's something that was uh, fabricated or the idea was gotten from the Bible. For instance, in Psalms 119 verse 89, it talks about the word of God being eternal. Uh, we know from the book of Revelations as well, talking about um, a book in heaven. You know, so some of this, I mean, of course, any, uh, someone can disagree with that. But I think that idea of an eternal tablet is quite a fabrication from, from the Bible or from the Christian narrative. And uh, secondly, the problem it raises for Islam is whatsoever thing, whatsoever moral uh, challenge with morality in the Quran. I mean, we could start naming so many, uh, you know, uh, verses about women, uh, verses about people worshiping okay. Muhammad. Um, Nick, yes, uh, I need I need you to as you are holding the mic, okay, okay. or yeah. the wherever yeah, like yeah. the thing you are speaking, make sure that's a little bit distance from you. Okay, yeah, is it better now? It's better. You are not as loud as you're supposed to be, but that's fine. So you oh. already made a case regarding um, idea of the preserved tablets is being stolen from the Christian scripture. Um, yes. Instead of like touching the other topics regarding our Bible cannot be from um, God. Um, have you got anything else to add on the topic of since today there are many different Arabic Qurans as well as there are abrogated and non-abrogated verses? What do you think... Uh, is in the eternal tablets which version of the quran is in the eternal tablets so that's the question it seems that um islamic dawah gang is being kind of struggling to get answers so we are just trying to find the ways how we can help them all right so uh, yeah thank you for the clarification um i mean regarding what is in, in what is in that tablet i mean it could is uh, is anybody's guess um i mean we could we could i mean we could postulates uh, several things. Is it the half, half Quran or is it the wash Quran? I mean, is anybody's guess? But I would, I would like to say that um, the 37 versions that we found, I would assume that um, it's, the, the, I mean, the tablet has contained, uh, contains variants of 
or everything we have to be there. I mean, if what the um, standard Islamic narrative says is true, then I would like to suggest that it contains variants of everything we could see. And uh, well, I'm, I'm more interested in the implications of that fact. And that means that everything horrible in what we have today is also present in that, in that tablet. Okay. Um, yep. Brother Joy, um, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I would just like to say, well, first, uh, uh, welcome. Thank you for calling. Thanks for joining us, brother. And uh, it's always, like I said, it, we like we love to hear other people's perspectives and get your guys' thoughts. So that's why we have open, you know, people can come in. We want to especially hear from Muslims, but we love to hear from our brothers and sisters as well. So in regards to what you said, though, I don't know if we need to sort of pit them against each other and say you know, like i would rather do this or that i think that these are both effective ways to reach out to muslims and to reach to minister to muslims so some people uh you know maybe they can take one avenue and they can take another avenue and and that's fine but i, I don't know if one is necessarily better than the other i think that they're both equally effective in getting muslims to see the falsehood of islam and the same goal is to show them that Islam is false and then to plant seeds and to pray that God will wake them up, open their eyes, and that they'll come to the truth. So those are my comments. Okay, thank you very much, Jai. Um, Nick, um, anything you want to add regarding uh, what might be in the eternal tablets, preserved tablets? Um, nothing else. Thank you. No. Uh, thank you very much for calling in, brother. God bless you. And you too. Bye. Um, even though our intention to try to help uh, your Muslim friends or our Muslim friends uh, regarding how to answer those questions better so or go and do research so they can give up Islam, um, we, it will be helpful if kind of they call in and then they make their cases. I am very much aware that they were told to not get engaged with TCCI ministries in any platforms, but right now we are talking about your holy book. This might be good time for you to practice um, some of your debate skill as well as um, other things. Um, there is a question, um, Jai. Um, by the way, um, it will be helpful when you put your questions instead of writing DCCI, if you kind of click the DCCI ministries, because that appears with the color code, so it makes my life a little bit easier to pick them. My eyesight is not very good. Um, so, why does Allah need a tablet of the Quran? Right. Is he afraid so that he might forget what he told Muhammad? <laughs> well, Muhammad often forgot what, what Allah told them, so maybe. Uh, it, so if memory serves correct, the the, chain of the correct chain of narration goes from Allah to the pen, to the tablet, to Gabriel. Is that right, sister? Am yeah. I, am I right? yeah. Okay. Allah, so, tablet, <laughs> Allah, pen, tablet, Gabriel, then Muhammad. Yeah. So, so, so the pen has some sort of memory of its own, and, and then it's transferred to the tablet. And the tablet, you know, I guess it's like a, like a, uh, I don't know, like a whiteboard, like if you picture like a whiteboard or something like that, or like some kind of tablet, I don't know what type of tablet it is. Maybe it's an iPad or maybe Allah has Samsung. I don't know. But anyway, he has some, something that he preserves the Quran on. I don't know the reason. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but w of course we're not really poking fun at that. We, we, we don't, I mean, there's, that's not the issue. The issue is what we're trying to get at is whether or not the Quran that we have today um, I guess the popular Hafs version of the Quran, if that is the Quran that's in the tablet or not. So it's not so much does Allah have this or does he not have that because as Christians, uh, we, we do believe that there is a limbs book of life and th there are different, you could say, books or tablets that God has. That doesn't mean God forgets things. Uh, but what is written on it is that's what's important. That's what we want to be uh asking our our muslim guests today and hopefully they can come on and interact with us yeah um i just want to kind of um make a comment on something which we are planning to go through tomorrow's live stream regarding uh, liverpool bombing uh the mr muslim who spent all of his days <laughs> all of his days in mosque last couple of uh, years 
um, and he spent all of uh, his Ramadan in the mosque and identified as um, Mr. Muslim, decided to uh, go and bomb uh, the cathedral where Christians meet to worship. Um, I'm very much aware that uh, certain uh, Islamic Dawah gangs and shameful uh, Mr. Muslims are making a video regarding he was Christian. Uh, there is not such a thing called Christian terrorist. So, uh, we, we do know that in, in Islam, taqiyya is acceptable. So, it, we do have videos after videos on DCCI channel where someone calls in and then they say um, they are Christian within a couple of minutes. Actually, no, they express they lie to us. They are Muslim. It is not strange or new thing. Um, I'm disappointed that uh, home office is just a kind of thinking, oh, that's brand new thing. Um, it is not. Uh, it is not a uh, new thing that people who come from different part of the world um, enters in this country in the intention of seeking asylum, and if they identify themselves as a Christian, then their asylum application kind of moves forward much quicker, or they get um, they get respond to their up they get positive respond to their application. Uh, and a couple of years ago, even in um, magazines, it was expressed, you can go travel to Europe and then uh, have the same structure, go to the church, um, express that you show interest to Christian faith, get baptized, it will help you um, to get your kind of residence in the country. From that, you can simply um, spread Islam or do whatever you wanted to do. Uh, we do know that lots of individuals are simply abusing this, uh, and it's been expressed um, already on the news that, uh, yes, he identified himself as a Christian, got baptized, but soon after his baptism, uh, he started hanging around in mosque, and uh, he, he spends his days in the mosque. None of the Christian turn up the mosque in the intention of worship, there is no place in Christian scripture tells us go to mosque to worship Yahweh. There is no place in Christian scripture says go and uh, blow yourself up or go and blow your brothers and sisters up. That's not biblical. So, um, dear Mr. Muslims, pull yourself together and uh, don't practice taqiyya. Uh, I know Islam allows you, but don't do that. It is so ugly. It is so ugly. Even like there are... Um, Anyway, I'm not going to comment on it, but um, anyway, it has been already expressed that individual is not a Christian who pretend to be Christian for um, nearly a year, and then after that he turned back to Islam and practiced Islam. So um, people whose scripture encourages to go and take the life of non-believers or even call, um, put terror in the hearts and minds of um, non-believers is people of Islam. So just like, don't, don't be that cheap, please. Don't be that cheap. Uh, there is not such a thing called Christian terrorist. Uh, radical Christian is the one who loves God enough to uh, love his neighbor or her neighbor and pray for those who persecute them. So that's the radical Christian. That's what you can get. Um, my Skype is buzzing from my phone. Um, if you are watching those um, individuals who are calling me from my Skype, Please note that Skype is not on. If you want to call in, please use the link in the chat pinned in. Call into the live stream through a um, different platform. Um, there is a problem with Skype as well as there is a problem. Yeah, there is a problem with Skype. Um, so there was a... Um, you already responded to the question on um, does Allah forget that for Allah has eternal tablets. We already respond to that. Right. That's not the point. The point we are asking is... We do know Allah's memory is not very good, but um, the point we are asking, the, the point we are trying to make is, we do have many different Arabic Qurans. Which one is in that eternal tablet? Um, Brother Jai, do you have any problem, or will you have any problem, if, I don't know, uh, five version of Surah Fatiha is in the eternal tablets? Um, do I have a problem? I, I, I guess it's a Muslim problem. I don't know if that's helpful to have five different versions of it on there. 
because a lot of the times these differ on one word and so imagine if the the verse is like like one verse is the same except for one word and and there's like let's say there's like 10 different variants of that one word it would just be repeating itself 10 times except for this one word so it'd be very repetitive i don't know uh i guess it would be problematic for for muslims and they'd have, they'd have to give us an explanation as to why that is uh but yeah so me personally uh, i don't i i mean my issue is is with uh, my here here's my problem my problem is can muslims come and answer these questions for us so the problem is we don't have muslims answering this for us <laughs> that's my problem um okay i'll i'll bring if i was a muslim i would seem to um kind of think to in a sense you do have islamic tradition which is expressing that um right into uh right recitation is going to intercede for uh muslims on the day of judgment right so that, therefore that, that, mm-hmm. therefore you need to know which one is the correct one uh therefore yeah. it will be like very bad if you've got like seven different versions of it in the eternal tablets because it's not like right recitations it is the only one version is going to appeal is um, ap- um going to be seen as the pale man and going to intercede and even argue with allah so there is a there will be a kind of problem on that side and and there's another there's another issue that is an issue for muslims not an issue for me but it's an issue for muslims if they say that the readings are built on the fa- the, the readings come from the fact that these different readers, these different Quran reciters would use their own intuition for certain things. They would they would say this was their personal interpretation, like the, their best take on how this particular word is pronounced or which word is used or how long the vowel is or how short the vowel is, whatever. They would use their intuition. Uh, am I still? Okay. Oh, brother, Steve Hassan, welcome, brother. I just see he's uh, with us. Uh, uh, so, uh, so yeah. So, so they would have, they would have to, uh, they would have to, and uh, they would have to answer this question as to how the how the personal opinion of the reader, how the personal opinion of the reader got their way onto the preserved tablet. Yeah. So yeah, that would be my answer for that. Okay. Um. So we've got someone on the line. Hello. Brother Steve, can you hear me? Oh, hi. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, peace of Christ with you, brother. How are you doing? Good, thank you. I, I just like wanted to another call. Yeah, I just wanted to say that. Uh, uh, I Steve, have to... Steve, just just a just, second, brother. Just one a second. More. I, I, me? Jai? Uh, I I I I mixed um, brother Steve's names together. I said brother Steve Hussein. Uh, I meant to say brother Steve Mushni. <laughs> Sorry about that, brother. Welcome with us. It's good to have you. Well, you are yeah. very polite, Jai. I'm not even sure like which name he uses publicly. So, uh, um, yes, brother, focus mm-hmm. now. Um, yeah. So we are to- we are talking about the preservation of the Quran in a sense of what is it in the eternal tablets? Because we looked at a video, um, and the question Muslim missionary is asking another Muslim regarding what is in these tablets. Um, it's that video is from 2016. And then similar question was being asked in 2020. So it seems they are struggling. We just thought we'd be kind enough and then help them out. Um, so um, what have you got to share with us tonight? Well, you know, I had confusion about this too, because, you know, I was when I started doing my live streams and stuff, I'd, I'd have all my, mostly my cousins who would come on and argue with me about this particular subject. You know, and I'd always ask them, okay, which, uh, which, uh, which Quran is on the preserved tablet? You know, we got the, you know, I had the whole stack of them, like eight of them. And I said, which one is on the preserved tablet? You know, and, you know, some would say all of them are on the preserved tablet. And then someone would say, well, there's a bunch of different preserved tablets. And, and then, you know, it got so confusing. But you know what really clarified things for me? Because it really, you know, if you want clarity about anything to do with Islam, watch Shabir Ali. 
because he clarifies things. He makes it mubin, you know, like the Quran says about Allah's mubin, clear words. And what Shabir Ali said, it was just, you know, uh, it just, it came down from uh, Jibreel himself must have been whispering in his ear. You know, he, you know, what he said is that Allah already knew what everybody was going to say. And he already wrote everything everybody's going to say on the preserved tablet to where it's already on the preserved tablet, no matter which Quran you have, no matter how you memorize. I've got the video of it. If you want to see, I just don't know if I can share it here. Um, you can share the um, screen if you want. Um, but um, Jai, what do you think regarding the Shabir Ali's response? Allah knew what people are going to come up. Therefore, he already put many different versions on um, his preserved tablets. To me, it sounds like an ad hoc explanation. So after the fact, he just kind of comes up with this. I don't think we have any early Muslims coming with this explanation. So Shabir is kind of known for that. He'll kind of make up his own theories after the fact. He, so in other words, uh, he, he takes all the evidence and instead of saying, okay, which came first, this thing, this thing, he just, he takes it all together and then he creates something and then that thing now fits all the evidence or he tries to make it fit, but it doesn't, it doesn't work. So, uh, so, <laughs> so, so here's, here's the thing. Why would, why, I mean, I guess I can't really say why, because we don't have a Muslim with us, so we don't have any Muslims to answer this question, but to any Muslims who take that position, uh, is the preserved tablet, are, is, is it, is it the, the opinions of men, is it the opinions, or is it the opinions of men who, who are trying to come up with their best idea of what the reading is, or is it his words? And so if Shabir wants to say that the Quran is the, you know, word of man, word of man, as opposed to the word of Allah, well, that's a, maybe that's a position he'll take. I don't know. But that's a question to any Muslim who takes that position. Um, yeah. So, um, Steve, we, brother, we can, we are able to see the video. So if you play, okay. play for us and then we see if the sound all is going to work and then we will be able to kind of hear what he's saying. I think this is the debate took place yes. 2000. Um, 14, where J. Smith introduced the manuscripts variations, and then where he expressed actually this amazing miracle of number 19. I, I, I think that's the clip from there, but please do share with us. Okay. The verse does say that God revealed the Quran and, and he will uh, preserve it. How does God preserve the Quran? It's through the efforts, efforts of human, human beings. Now, now let, let me borrow, borrow a, a, an analogy from, from uh, the, the development, development of, of life. life. Uh, you, you think, think of, of a gene, gene that is being passed, passed on from generation to generation, and then, and then there, there, there is a splitting, splitting of the generations. Generations. There is there a branching, branching out in many, many trees. That gene survives, survives in, the in the many branches. branches. The question, the question is, is, when we when check, one, check of the branches, one of the branches, does it, does it have, have this gene? gene? So, so the Quran, the Quran okay, that I'm okay, holding uh, here brother, is can you, one of... Brother, can you stop it for a second? Okay. So, um, the way um, you are playing, so I'm hearing echo from this side. Um, so okay. what we will do is uh, we will give you another chance um, to play that for us again, if that's okay. Okay. Um, I'm wondering. I'm wondering if I mute my mute. Uh, maybe if I mute uh, this channel, can I mute myself that might here? Work. If you mute yourself, we won't be able to hear it. I'm guessing, but let's try that. Okay. Let's, I'm let's not try sure it. how to. Uh, can I mute myself here, or do you yes. need to mute? Yes, you can. You can mute yourself. Okay. So you have you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then you see like a mute option. Okay, let me see. But if he mutes himself, he won't be able to play the video. I'm that's what I'm guessing. But let's see. Um, there, there was a new, uh, there was a new update where when you share screen, you are allowed to share audio. Okay. So I don't know if it's connected to your mic or to. I'm not sure how it works. Okay, I guess we can um, try. So, right now it's. Yeah, I think we, we can't hear it. No, we can't hear it. So let's try again, without unmuting yourself. Can you unmute yourself and then we get to that side? Um, it's going to be short okay. anyway. So just give full attention and then we can summarize at the end. Okay. Does, Does the Quran, Quran have the God? 
a gene. gene. And we have and seen, we have yes, seen it yes, it does. It has, it has the, the evidence of design, design in, it, in it, showing that this, that this is not by human, human intervention. intervention. It is a, it divine, is a divine book. book. So if so Jay had if listened, listened to my 25, to my 25 minutes of talking, talking about the mathematical, the mathematical miracle, miracle, actually, miracle, actually, I didn't spend 25 minutes, minutes, but that's minutes, what he thinks. Uh, 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 I've, I've spoken I've about many different aspects of the miraculous nature of the Quran, and we will see that it has the God gene in it. Okay. Um, so sound wasn't very clear. Um, therefore, um, can you just summarize it for us, brother? Okay. You know, that, 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 that actually was not the part that I really wanted to show, uh, but I, I could summarize for you. It, it, it's an absolutely astonishing uh, explanation. But he said that, you know, because there's all these different Qurans, and he says, now, which one is on the Loh al-Mahfud? I think somebody asks, asks him that. Which one is on the Loh al-Mahfud, the preserved tablet? And he says, well, Allah knew what people were going to say and how they were going to memorize it. And so he had already written it in the preserved tablet. So it's already in the preserved tablet. So Allah knew, Allah knew what Mr. Hafs is going to come up with. Allah knew what Mr. Walsh is going to come up with, Duri is going to come up with. Therefore, he put everything in their version, in eternal tablet. Yet, it seems that he forgot to mention that to Muhammad, um, because Muhammad is not talking about those things. Correct? That You, you know, I, I, I think you understood it better than I did, because I can't make head <laughs> or tail out of his explanation. But <laughs> Okay. okay. Um, Jai, um, anything you would like to add uh, on that? And also, I saw um, Abbas is making comments on the preservation of the Quran and um, what is in the eternal tablets. Um, you are very welcome to use the link and call in and then join us, Abbas, if you think that's helpful and quicker. But we will kind of try to make a comment on your questions as well or comments. Jai, um, anything yeah. you want to... What one of the things that he one of the things that he started out with, what Shabir started out with, was chapter fifteen, verse nine, and he's talking about how this says that the Quran will be preserved. So, if 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 okay, let's just take it like this. Okay, let me let me let me give give it uh, this. Uh, okay, there's there's a couple different ways to answer that. So one way to answer that is, first of all, we don't. First of all, the verse doesn't actually say Quran in that verse it doesn't say that he's going to preserve the quran it uses the word dhikr the the reminder the remembrance okay that's that's what it says now in the context you'll see that the quran is included in this but it's not the only thing included in it there's an argument that can be made that the dhikr is all of allah's revelation but even if we put that to the side there are muslim interpretations there are there are muslim interpretations that take the dhikr there as muhammad and they say that it's not the quran that's going to be preserved it's muhammad that's going to be preserved and so you can go to yeah you can go to you can go to al qurtubi you can go to some of the older com some of the more some of the the big commentaries and i say older because muslims today they've come up with like people like shabir or whatever we're talking about the the big scholars if you go to the big scholars you'll see that they list among the interpretations of this verse that some took it to mean that Muhammad is the one being preserved. So if this verse isn't even talking about the Quran, then Muslims don't have anything in the Quran that say that he's going to preserve it, if it's talking about Muhammad. So how do we know? How do we know which interpretation is correct? Uh, you know, that's that's a debate Muslims need to have. Okay. Um, brother, did you want to make a point? Um, you know, the... Uh... You know, just along the line, which I think Brother Jay was probably going to get to it too, it is that there are very there are specific verses in the Quran. One of them calls the Torah the dhikr. One of them calls the Zabur the dhikr. And so when it says in the Nazalna dhikr, we sent down the dhikr. It doesn't say Quran. It says dhikr. That means the Torah. At least, uh, you know, and, and it specifically says that the Torah is, uh, you know, the reminder, the dhikr, which is what that verse is saying. It's going to be preserved. And so I think it's just we need another Shabir Ali explanation to help us through this one, too. So. OK, um, yeah, so just on that note, sister, there, there, are, there's a, there are verses in the Quran that refer to Ahl al-Dhikr, meaning the people of the dhikr. And this is clearly referring to Christians and Jews. 
So if they're being called the people of the dhikr, and the dhikr is the Qur'an, well then how can it be referring to Christians and Jews? It, it has to be referring to the Bible. So so the Qur'an is is all over the place with who the dhikr is or what the dhikr is. But if we just want to go by Muslim interpretation, like I said, there's a difference of interpretation. Some say that it's even a, it's not even about any book. Some say it's about Muhammad himself. Oh, wow. Shabir, we need you. Um, Allah needs him. All Muslim community needs them. <laughs> it's not we need them. We need him to repent and turn to Lord Jesus Christ. The rest of the non-Christian world needs him to defend Islam. So um, there was a quick comment on Allah to be the best. Actually, we're supposed to be deceiver, but there was a comment from mm -hmm. the same individual where he expressed Allah is the best of planners. Um, he also expresses that Bible is written by man, not the Quran. Therefore, I guess he's assuming since the author of the Quran is Allah, uh, therefore, um, that will help us to think through again the question of what did Allah write at the first place in his preserved tablets um mr muslim would you be kind enough and then answer that question since quran is not written by man according to you it would be great to get some um answer to that um what allah put together um you don't need to put your hand up in here brother um yes mm -hmm. i just want to say because I, I actually spoke about this last night a little bit and it just you know i was talking about the preservation of the quran and stuff and one thing that, you know, there's a very specific verse in the Quran where Allah says, I wrote in the Psalms, you know, I wrote in the Psalms, you know, in the Zabur, you know, so Allah is saying that he wrote, you know, in the Zabur. So he did actually write in those. And the thing that, that that's awesome about that is that in Psalm 22, it says, it talks about the crucifixion. They pierced my hands and my feet. In Psalm 110, it says, my, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. So there's the Trinity. And then in Psalm 2, it says, yeah, you are my son. So there's the deity of Jesus Christ and the sonship of Jesus Christ. Those are all in the Psalms. And so I'm thinking, Allah wrote, you know, the Psalms, it says in the Quran. So anyway, that's one thing he wrote. So. <laughs> Um, thank you very much for that, uh, brother. I'm just trying to keep eye on the chat to make sure we don't miss the Muslim comments, but all I'm getting is their attack towards <laughs> our glorious God. That's just like seriously very, very bad. So, uh, yes, brother. As you do that, sister, is it okay if I, is, as you do that, sister, is it okay if I share a variant? Um, yes. Because we talked a lot about the, okay. So here's one variant. This one is from chapter 113. And it's from chapter two, 113. Okay, I need you two. to, yeah, I need you to share your screen or. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't have. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yes, Surah 113. Yeah. Um, we will be talking about the variations in Surah 113. Yeah, yeah. so, so this, so this particular one, and it, it's saying uh, uh, that I seek refuge in the Lord of the uh, daybreak the daybreak and then it goes on to say in the standard reading in the standard reading it says it says um from the evil which he created which he created so that so so the arabic khalaq or khalaqa meaning what he created he created this now there's another reading that's non-canonical it's not it's not considered one of the canonical readings today and instead of instead of it reading as from the evil, so I seek refuge in the Lord of the day or the daybreak or however you uh, want to translate that word. Uh, it says from the evil which He created. The other reading instead of khalaqa, it says khulaq, khulaq, which is in the uh, passive, and it means from the evil which was created. So it's not attributing Allah to the creation of evil. It's not saying Allah is the one who created it, it's just saying this evil exists. And so Muslims through, and, and this is something that, this is something that Shadi Nasser notes, and through Islamic history, we see through different interpretations and different schools of thought. For example, the um, the Mu'tazile school or of thought, they took the, they took the verse that said, that said khulaq, meaning, uh, 
I seek refuge in the, I seek refuge from the Lord, from the evil which exists or which he, which he no which 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 was created, which was created. So they would use that to say that Allah didn't create evil. So some Muslims would use this verse in that particular reading to say that Allah didn't create evil because it doesn't say khalaqa, it says khulaq. So 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 th so that's one. And then the other Muslims said, no, he did create evil because the other reading. So this is a theological difference that is uh, this is a theological difference that exists because of these different readings. Okay, so for and, for me to understand, brother, mm -hmm. as you can remember my because of my agenda, I kind of don't get everything clear. Surah one hundred thirteen states, "From the evil of what which he created." So Allah is the one who is responsible of creating evil according to Surah 113 in current Hafs Quran. Yeah, not but, just Hafs, but all of the canonical readings, yeah. they, they all have this one, yeah. So um, so that's in today's Quran. But um, the Qurans which are not being chosen as the Quranicals, um, canonicals, in that it states from the evil which was created. So we don't know who created the evil. That's a practical... Uh, Th there is a theological question yeah. on who is the creator of evil according to Surah 113 or who was in um, early centuries until they put together Allah is the one who created evil. Correct? Yeah. And so, so, yes, exactly, sister. And how we know this, so the one that says, um, I mean, Shari, the, the one that says um, from um, from the evil, which, which, which was created. So this one, you don't really get the idea that necessarily Allah is the one creating. But it says, it says, uh, you know, the evil that is that was created, without really attributing it to Allah. This is what the Mu'tazila school used, to, and they they were used to justify their particular belief that Allah didn't create evil. So, so, so they would actually use that reading to justify their belief. Yeah. So that's like yeah. that caused division uh, in the early Muslim community. Um, Brother Steve, um, have you got anything, any comment? Would you like to add on Surah 113, verse two, or? You know, I actually want to show to show another another variance, but um, yes, is that okay? Yeah, I, um, I want to you, show. If you are not, if you are not gonna uh, provide what I ask you, and if you are coming up with the new response, that's fine, brother. You are my guest. Um, yes, what is the new variance you want to share with us? Okay, I, I wanted to show the. This is the one of my favorite ones that I like to use, because it shows you. It, it brings so many factors of the, so many of the problems with the subject of variant readings. Uh, you see it in this verse. It has it has three ver it has three words in it in Arabic. It, it this is from Surah forty three verse nineteen. And uh, in the Hobbes version, it's talking about angels, malaika, and it says uh, in the Hobbes version, it says "Humma abad rahman which means they are the slaves of the Most Gracious. But the Warsh version says "Humma and rahman they are with the Most Gracious. Uh, talking about angels, in one case uh, they are slaves of the Most Gracious. In one case, they are with the most righteous. One of the factors here, and, and, and I, I, I really went over, you know, went through this over and over with my cousins, uh, you know, it, they said, well, both of them are right. They are slaves of the most righteous and they are with the most righteous. <laughs> you know, but the difference, the real difference in this verse is, is a diacritical mark. You know, that if you put the diacritical mark on top, of the word uh, abed, or, or you know the the consonantal structure abed, if you put the dot on top, it becomes their end, which is with. If you put it underneath, it becomes abed, which means slaves. And so you, uh, yeah, there it is. You can see it right there. El malaika el ladin hum end el rahman. You know, and and if you see the uh, the the top one, uh, go keep going. Keep going to the left. Okay, one more, one more. Okay, that's it right there. That consonantal structure right there. If you put the dot on the bottom, they are slaves. If you put the dot on top, it becomes our end, which means with. 
they are with the most gracious or they are uh, slaves of the most gracious. And so you can see several of the problems of the Othmani, alleged, alleged uh, Othmani, that they didn't have the diacritical marks. And th of course, this is, there's so many examples of this diacritical mark issue. But here you also have the issue of the different meanings. You also have the, different, the issue of the different meanings. You know, they say, well, it doesn't affect it. Yes, this affects the meaning, you know. Yes, so we are talking in Surah 43, verse 19, where I, I did put a little bit earlier on the screen, um, even the British translation where they go through the different variations and then how does it change the meaning. Uh, it has been expressed that um, Surah 43, verse 19, who are the servants of all the merciful, actually can also be, um, let me put it, uh, actually I can put it on the screen, sorry. Um, if you kind of look at where it says servants, and then you've got footnote, it says, if you look at the different Qurans, you will see instead of says, who are the servants of Allah, it says, who are with the most merciful, so who are yeah, with yeah. Allah. So they are, they are different things. It doesn't matter, like, oh, they are servants with Allah and with Allah, then it makes sense. But in here, it's one of them. They are servants of Allah or they are with Allah. So that's the example Brother Steve brought up to our attention. Um, you know, and this, if, you know, uh, Sister Hattu, there's one, one thing that I've heard Shaykhs talk about, not specifically this verse, but about issues like this, is they say, you see, this is the richness of the Quran. Each one gives you a deeper dimension of what, you know, but it goes back to the fact which one is on the preserved tablet. Is yeah. there one Quran? And so on. So uh, that, there is nothing wrong that you do have um, like better explanations or you are putting everything together to make sense of it. But the question uh, Muslims are asking as well as we are asking, which is in the eternal preserved tablets? Um, uh, let first Brother Jai to make a comment on Surah 43, verse 19, and then we've got um, okay. someone on the line. We will pass, we will take the cola. Um, yes, okay. Brother Jai? Thank you, sister, and thank you, brother. So this is, a, this is a really good example of Ibn Khaldun made this point, that's, and he said that the Rasam or the script of Uthman was extremely defective. And this is a perfect example of how it's defective, how it could have been better. Why? Because this same script, if you read it in the Uthmanic uh, script, the Rasam, the way that the way that the oldest Qurans are written, the Mus'haf of the oldest Qurans, they 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 uh, they read it the same the same exact way. The only thing that differs is like brothers like brother Steve said, do you put the dot above? The, the the second one or do you put it below and then they add in the also they add in the alif as well for ibad and so they add in the alif because that's not in the actual uh, Uthmanic script they they added in you know they add in like the alif like they would add in like the fatha or, or or any of the other or vowels or anything like that or like the noon or the ba whatever Th this is a later edition so they look the they look the exact same until you add these dots until you add the Aleph or whatever. And and so the question is, here's another question for Muslims. The preserved tablet, which script is it written in? Is it written in the Uthmanic script? Or is it written in today's script? Brother, which script, which language? They, yeah. are, they already messed up with one very basic question. And now you are bringing, <laughs> now you are bringing another question. Now they are gonna bang their heads, just be, kind be gentle <laughs> first give them time for the it's been only four yeah. years for the like five years for the years. first question give him a little bit time <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah that, that's true that's true so so i want to give them a little heads up though and yeah. maybe we'll give you guys five more years and in five more years we're going to ask you which script was it written in was it written in today's script where you have a clear distinction between the letter ba and the letter ta and all of the like the noon and all of the like is the, is it written in that script where there are there's clear distinctions between letters and where there, there's vowels and the tashkil, harakat, all of these things? Or is it written in the Uthmanic script, which doesn't have these distinctions and it's very ambiguous? 
or is it not written in Arabic at all? Maybe, maybe like some people suggest it's written in Syriac or maybe it's written in another language or who knows that that's what we want to know though. What language is the Quran, the preserved tablet written in? Is it written in the Arabic? And if it's in Arabic, if it's in the Arabic language, what script is it in? That, that's another question. So. Okay, so that question we will be asking once we receive the answer to this very basic question. So it was just pre-warning, yeah. dear Muslim um, people, please prepare yourself. Get on A to study. Up, yeah. I think a couple of years <laughs> that question will be coming to you. Um, so we've got someone on the line. Let's take, um, take it in. Hello. 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 Oh, yeah, I don't know if you're getting me. I'm hearing very bad sound quality. Um, hello, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm Light. My name is Light. Are you Muslim? Are you Christian? If you are Muslim, um, make your case. If you are Christian, can you please be kind enough and tell us that uh, Lord Jesus Christ is the eternal son of the Father and Muhammad is false prophet? I am a Christian. I'm a born again Christian, and I believe Jesus is the Son of the Most High God, and Muhammad is a false prophet. Okay, um, we are talking about um, we are talking about which version of the Qurans uh, is in the Eternal Tablet. So there are different Arabic Qurans. Which one is in the preserved tablets? Have you, what have you got to add to, into our conversation, sir? Well, what what I I don't know much about Muslim scriptures, but what I know, what I know, Jesus is the only Word of God that is preserved forever. He is eternal, and He will never be destroyed. Whatever He cannot be edited. Okay, so you are looking from the theological perspective that while Lord Jesus Christ is identified as the eternal word of God who came and made his dwelling among us, he will not be corrupted, he will, be, he will not be edited, he will not be eaten by sheep, he won't be uh, abrogated. And you want people to turn yeah, to that Lord is my... Jesus Christ? Yeah, that is my point. Okay, thank you very much, brother. Uh, anything else would you like to add? I, I don't have much. I'm new to this discussion. I just I have just joined you some minutes ago. I think four, five minutes ago. I'm just enjoying your conversation. I also want to learn how to bust you Muslims, something of sort. Okay, um, yeah, so one of the arguments um, we are using right now, we are discussing it, actually, it seems the argument, uh, a question Muslims are trying to get the answer for last couple of years. What is it in the eternal tablets when we look at the, these different Arabic Qurans? So, we've been live um, just over one hour, 17 minutes, 53 seconds. Uh, go back, watch it again from the beginning. I think first four minutes is a worship song, but rest is uh, linked with the topic. And then um, in the future, if you've got any question on the topic, feel free to call him, brother. Okay, fine. Okay, thank you very much for calling in tonight. Okay. Um, um, any of you brothers um, wanted to make any comment regarding um, using the argument? Uh, okay, now we understand there are many different Qurans. Quran has been corrupted, destroyed, all those kind of things. But um, Lord Jesus Christ as the eternal word of God is perfect and was not corrupted. Um, do like, Would you find this argument can be beneficial in the uh, engagement with Muslims regarding the preservation of the word of God? Uh, I'll let okay. Brother Jai to go first and then Brother Steve will be second. Okay. Yeah, gentleman's first. <laughs> <laughs> that was in that was uh, i am meeting brother steve because he laughs loud and it's like very loud um it was in the intention <laughs> that was in the intention like let's start yes brother john okay right yeah this this is this is a useful way to talk to this is a useful uh sort of like way to to talk to muslims when we talk to them about uh 
if they want they want to like sometimes they'll want to compare the canon of the bible to the quran to us like they'll talk about the canonization of the bible versus the canonization of the quran and i think it is more effective to compare jesus to the quran because that is a more uh that's a better comparison to what muslims believe about the quran that it is his eternal and not that we don't believe uh anyway okay i don't want to get too uh you know, we, we, we can get into we can get into how we view the Bible versus how Muslims view the Quran, but uh, without getting into too much detail, I think it's a, it's a it's a very effective way. You can do both, but it's a very effective way to show that yes, uh, this is the this is the eternal Word of God who took on a created nature, right? This is the eternal Word of God that took on a created nature. This is paralleled to the Quran which supposedly has this divine nature where it's in this preserved tablet. And then it took on a created nature when it entered into creation. So I think you can make some very interesting parallels in terms of what Muslims believe about the word of God. So yeah, I think it's useful for, for, for a lot of things like that. Okay, thank you very much, brother. Um, brother Steve? You know, I love using this. Uh... You know, a few years ago, there was an article in Time magazine. Uh, this was after 9-11, and Americans were trying to find out what Islam is all about. And there was a guy in Time magazine who wrote this, and I was really impressed at the depth of his wisdom, that he said that if you really want to look at the difference of uh, Islam and Christianity, it's just what Jay just said. He said it was about what is the word of God. To the Muslims, the Quran is the eternal word, but to the Christians, it, the eternal word is Jesus Christ. And I was impressed that Time Magazine said that, but it, it's, you know, it kind of stayed with me because there is a lot of logic in that. And I like to use that, you know, because chapter 4, verse 171 of the Quran says, Isa bin Miriam, uh, Rasulullah wa kilimetahu. Jesus, the son of Mary, is the messenger of Allah and his word that he cast to Mary. And then in chapter 3, verse 45, it says, uh, the angel came to Mary and says, you know, Allah uh, uh, be God tells you of a word from him whose name is Jesus Christ. And so it, the Quran very clearly says that Jesus is the word of God. And, you know, it leads to a lot of, I think, very uh, pregnant opportunities to, um, to present the gospel, for instance, that, that, uh, that the word is eternal that the word is uncreated, that Allah created everything by his word. You know, all of those things are very parallel to, you know, John 1, you know? So, yeah, I really love using that argument, the, those arguments about that. Okay. Um, thank you very much. And then uh, uh, bottom line is, we don't want Muslims to just give up Islam and become atheists. Bottom line is, we want them to uh, worship our glorious God. Um, he's... Like, God is just so delightful, so amazing. So we don't want Muslims to kind of, oh, yeah, Quran is corrupted. There are many different Qurans. We don't know what to do with it. Um, we've been asking this question for five years and still no answer. Let me become ex-Muslim. Because as an ex-Muslim, you won't have life in its fullness as well. We want you to turn to Lord Jesus Christ. We want you to have him. We want you to have God um, for eternity. Um Brother Steve, do you have anything else uh, one, one to add before I kick you out? Uh, <laughs> sorry. Be before before we do that, sister, I just okay. wanted to say that, that there actually there there is an answer. Remember, there is an answer, but the answer is that the preserved tablet is is in the unseen. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And we don't have we won't have access to it. Yeah, yeah, so, answer so, yeah. which they can be satisfied because that yeah, video is from 2016. It, so yeah, yeah so. that video is from 2016, and similar question was. Po um, posed in 2020 that means for four years they were not satisfied with the answer they were right bringing right. out so like hopefully they will learn they will able to face the quran and then simply answer the basic questions um brother steve do you have last comments uh, before i gently like you know, kick you out <laughs> as long as you do it gently so. <laughs> but uh, just, but... brother, just... Okay, I had somebody send me this. I don't know. I'm not sure what it says. It says so Muslim sheikhs are saying that Allah's tablet is a whore of Jannah, fornicating with all the many different Arabic Qurans. Somebody said that. I'm not sure. 
Uh, for, such, to... for such a claims, we need reference. I think once you get oh, okay. the reference, drop us, and then we pick that up. Is that okay? okay. Because that's like very uh, kind of that's a claim needs to be referenced. Who says okay. when it's been said? All right. Well, that was Ryan said it. But anyway, okay. it was great to be with you guys. Uh, go ahead and can kick me out gently. So. Uh, God bless you, brother. Thank, Thank you very much for joining. Uh, we can we can kick people out, but amazing thing is like God doesn't cast out anyone. Um, let me just pick up this call, um, brother um, Jai. Um, we've got someone on the line, but um, that there is a question. I put it on the screen. It says, "I want to know: Do Muslims still b uh, bother you with Bart or man stuff?" Um, to still mus do, do they, Muslims still use part or man arguments to attack yeah, Christians? They'll, yeah, they they always will. It's like it's like using D dot or Zakarnaik or whatever. They'll they'll keep using the even though even though you know Ermin doesn't work for them uh, all the time. He he in some instances he argues on their behalf, but certainly not for the his view of the historical Jesus. Um, when it comes to when it comes to uh, the people like Zakhar Naik or Ahmed Dilar or whatever, Muslims will keep using these arguments over and over and over again, even though they've been refuted time and time and time again. That's why it seems like we have to keep responding to the same arguments again and again, because Muslims continue to bring them up. So sometimes it's a Muslim who's just learning about these arguments for the first time, and they might hear someone quoting Bart Ehrman, and they don't know the answer to these questions so that's that's possible one one kind of situation another one is that it's the same muslim just repeating the same thing over and over again even after being refuted um and they're just being dishonest and making the same arguments so yes uh, they are but we hope that the ones that we answer and the ones that we receive answers we pray that they'll be you know, consistent or honest, and they'll stop using them, and they'll drop Islam and come to the Lord Jesus. That's our hope, and that's our prayer. Thank you very much, brother. We do have someone on the line. Hello, sir or ma'am, can you hear me? Sir, can you hear me? I know you can hear me, but do you wanna kind of say hi to us? No? Okay. Uh, sometimes people can be camera shy. Okay. Um, let me, um, if that's okay with you, Brother Jai, I want to just, since our main focus was uh, what is in this uh, preserved tablets, um, if that's okay with you, I'll just bring up that um, video again and then we remember um, okay. what is the answer which um, the video is being recorded in 2016 and similar question was being asked in 2020 right. so let's go in yeah. sorry, 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 sorry. sorry I need to find the minute okay let's start from here okay um, let me take the call, brother. Just when someone is also calling it this time. Hello. No, someone decided they are gonna abuse the link in the chat. Please don't do that. That's just so ugly. If you are gonna call in, please do call in in the intention of having conversation discussions. Don't call in in the sense like just distracting the live stream. That's not very wise. Um, so let's hear from um, Islamic Dawah Gangs the this very basic question what is in the eternal tablets and then we get the answer get to hear the answer from someone who has been identified as an expert on the area this is the word you start thinking ah but once you have in-depth understanding you learn this book is preserved how would you go about proving now we talked about some of the variant readings all of which are you say accepted all of which the prophet said it like this and he said it like that allah said it like this and he said it like that because they keep asking the question, so which one is in the preserved tablet? What's the answer to that question? The preserved tablet is that of the unseen, yeah. and we will not be given access to that. Yeah. What is? <laughs> <laughs> I like his little like response. Like I don't know what noise he's making, but I think that's like some. Like I think he's showing his dissatisf dissatisfaction with the answer. 
<laughs> can you can you play it again, sister? I, like I like that noise he makes. It's like a, like a oink or something. I don't know what it is. Yeah, he's just like, okay, get ready. I'm gonna give you an answer to this very yeah. basic question, <laughs> and I'm not even satisfied with the answer. So let's play that back again. Um, let's listen again. Moving now, we talked about some of the variant readings, all of which are, you say, accepted, all of which the Prophet said it like this, and he said it like that. Allah said it like this, and he said it like that. Because they keep asking the question, so which one is in the preserved tablet? What's the answer to that question? The preserved tablet is that of the unseen, yeah. and we will not be given access to that. Yeah. What is written is the Qur'an. <laughs> Allah... Yeah. So he's not satisfied. I think that's what that expression means. I don't know what exactly it is, but <laughs> um, he's not satisfied with the answer. The preserved tablet is that which is in the unseen, and we will not be given access to that. Um, so what is the answer to the question? We don't know. Basically, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's like a um, Muslim way of saying we don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised he didn't say Allahu Alam or like I'm surprised oh, yeah. he didn't say that. Usually that's the maybe he says it at the end. I don't know, but uh, but I'm I'm sure uh, I'm sure he's not satisfied with this. And the proof is he continues for four more years on this journey of answering this question, <laughs> and then he asked another sheikh, another scholar of Islam, and he wasn't satisfied with that answer either. <laughs> um, you would, kind, you would kind of think like for so video is from 2016, and this question. We asked this question even before 26 different Arabic Qurans, and then we've been asking that since then as well. Uh, like, in four years, you would develop better arguments. Like, I don't know, like, quite often I give uh, wrong answer to the questions at Speakers Corner or in my engagement with Muslims, but within a week, maximum it will be two weeks, I develop better arguments or better response to the objections I receive. Um, right. that I don't do the same mistake, but four years, man, like, seriously, that's like very, very long time. So four years uh, comes to July 2020, where similar question is being asked to Yasir Kadi. Um, Yasir Kadi's response was a little bit different, but bottom line was like, yeah, Allah knows best. Um, his response was, I don't know. I don't know which one is it. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's funny. Um, you know, Yasser Kali was basically saying like, "Don't ask a question you don't want yeah. the answer to," and he was it's basically like easy. saying, "I think his phrase was, <laughs> it's not easy, yes and no.'" Yeah, it's not easy, yeah. yes or no. <laughs> don't push me. You're pushing me. Don't push me. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, there are a lot of very uh, funny sayings that he said during the interview. But yeah, it's essentially the same thing, really. Like you know. We don't know, <laughs> or like, what what would the blank most half? What would the blank um, pa uh, book be, or the pages, or whatever? Like, I I don't know. I would I don't know. It's like he's like he's like the question is what was revealed or how was the Quran recited in early Medina, and so he's not sure. He's not sure. So the same thing applies to this um, to this preserved tablet. So how do we move forward from now, brother? We've got the question which has been like on the. Um, on the circle for a couple of years, there is no answer. And even like, as I said, we were asking the similar question on the abrogate, abrogated verses. Um, five years on, still there is no answer. Should we just move on yeah. and then just ignore what is there and then get no, on with our no. lives? Or what do we, like, where do we go from I, this? I, th I think we should keep asking, sister. And eventually, eventually, I think that the question that we should ask is what, what script is it written in? Like, is it written in the Ottomanic script with the no, no dots at all? No, no tashkil, no harakat, no nukat, nothing like that. Or is it, is it written in like a script that has all of those things that, that makes it a lot easier to understand? Uh, so uh, like what script? That's another question we can ask in the future. So um, is it, but is it now, Hijazi? Is it um, Nabatian exactly. Aramaic? Or is it 21st century Arabic? So which script it is written? But right, right. It's like, don't... And there's a lot of different variations of, of like the Arabic script. So which one is there written in? Yeah. But we don't want to ask a question which they will go and throw themselves from the mountain or something. Like, oh, yeah, we if don't they want can't handle it, you know, like, well, we want them they to don't really shame stuff anyway. They will probably just ignore that as well. 
Yeah, we don't we don't want them to follow the sunnah for sure. I agree with you, sister. We don't want anyone to try to jump off a mountain or anything like that. Uh, so I agree with you there. But I hope that these questions are probing and get Muslims thinking. Because here are your apologists right here, two Dawah gang members right here. They don't know the answer to the question. So they're going to the sheikh. And the sheikh doesn't know the answer to the question. So they go to another sheikh and he doesn't know the answer to the question. So this hopefully will get Muslims to think, okay, our apologists are, are not, well, they, you know, Dawah gangs don't know the answer to the questions. Our scholars don't know the answers to these questions. So I think that should be like a big question mark for the Muslims and get them to think about this. Uh, it seems we are in the same page in this. Like I, I have someone who kind of says, okay, if they don't have answer, we push the question um, because it will cause them to have more doubts, more doubts, and then they can't find the answer. They will give up Islam. That's like how it kind of seems to working. Uh, so thank you for kind of supporting my view on that, brother. Um, well, I did yeah. hope that um, Muslims will call in and then give, a, give, give us answer, but sadly that didn't happen, which is fine. Probably it, they need like years, that they need years. Remember that uh, story which we were talking about, this gentleman had 400 years. <laughs> he was saying like, oh, I didn't have 400 years to come up with the arguments you came up. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he didn't uh, have 400 years for people to polish the, the, in the mosque <laughs> and all that stuff. So, yeah. So maybe we need to give them 400 years to answer this question. <laughs> they need to polish their answers and, you know, I, I don't know. But guess I mean, the sad thing is, though, the sad thing is, Muslims, you don't have 400 years. Okay. The, the, you have only your life. That's it. And you can't waste it just hoping you're going to find an answer to this question because this is only one of the questions there are so many questions that muslims you guys don't have answers to to show that islam is false and there are so many everything is pointing to jesus to show that he is the way he is the truth he is the life that he is the only way to the father uh, and so so you don't have 400 years muslims you don't have 400 years you only have your lifetime and nobody has tomorrow promised so if there are any Muslims listening right now and this struck a chord with you or this uh, uh, is making you think and making you question Islam, then we urge you to please, please give up Islam. Go on your knees, repent to the Lord Jesus and ask him to reveal himself to you. Ask him to show you the truth. And he will. He says, call to me and I'll answer. Jeremiah 33, 3. So this is, uh, this is, uh, uh, yeah, so I see we have a guest on, but this is yeah. my uh, my uh, my statement to the Muslims. Yeah, let's um, say hi to our guest. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Can you tell us who are you? Um, hearing uh, the YouTube playing the back, uh, not sure how to stop it. Sir, can you tell us who are you? So I'm not sure the intention, but this caller called in three or four times already tonight. Um, yes, bottom line is, bottom line is, as Brother Jai said, we don't have 400 years. You don't have 400 years. Uh, we don't even know we are gonna do next. We are gonna be uh, alive next minute. Therefore, breath we give out and take in needs to be focused, eternal son of God. Breath we take out and um, take out and give out needs to needs to bring attention to our glorious God. Um, while you are breathing in and out, uh, please, please, please turn to Lord Jesus Christ because we don't want it to be too late. Scripture is very clear and Christian scripture doesn't make jokes about it. One day every knee is going to bow down to Lord Jesus Christ. Every knee. One day every tongue is going to confess Christ is the Lord. That's going to happen. That's going to happen willingly or unwillingly. It's going to happen. 
willingly or unwillingly, we are all going to bow down to him. Willingly or unwillingly, we will confess Christ is the Lord. That's going to happen willingly or unwillingly. Scripture tells us when it is unwillingly, consequences are awful. You will be separated from our triune God forever and you will be punished for that forever. That eternity is so long. But when it happens willingly, you will be enjoying our delightful Lord. So therefore, therefore we want it to be willingly. We want it to be willingly. So uh, please, please, dear Muslims, turn to Lord Jesus Christ. It is very much serious. It is very much serious. Turn to him and be his so that you can have him for eternity. Um, Brother Jai, do you want to make the conclusion or you feel we already did the conclusion? Yeah, yeah I, I, I want to say amen to what you said, sister. And I think that, that uh, I think that we did a conclusion. Uh, I, li I liked, uh, I really enjoyed doing the stream with you today, sister, and all of the guests that we had. Uh, and so, you know, um, I, oh, I guess we have another one coming in. But uh, yeah, I think, I, think that, I think that all said on my own, sister. And thank you for having me on. And, uh, um, just uh, yeah. wait, hold, hold on a minute on the line, Brother Jai. Yeah. Um, okay. Hello, sir. Hello. Um, That's it. Sir, who are you? Can you tell us who are you? I'm a Christian from Birmingham, England. Okay. Um, we are talking about the preservation of the Quran. Um, would you be able to tell us your thoughts or why did you call in? Uh what the holes in the Quran mean? Um, there are holes in the narrative. <laughs> what about it? I mean, even the, the changes they talk about in the Bible are not contextual changes anyway. They just, they don't change the meaning. If some of them are changing the meaning, then it's a serious problem, isn't it? You know, if the Quran's been changed, and the meanings changed as well. That's a serious problem. Um, it's a problem if it's been changed anyways, because it's not supposed to have been changed, is it? Um, so can you tell us that Muhammad is false prophet, Jesus Christ is the eternal son of the Father, and then we just make a comment on your comments. Say that again. Can you tell us that Muhammad is false prophet, and Jesus Christ is the eternal son of the Father? Absolutely. Yeah. Can you verbalize that for me? Yeah, Muhammad's a false prophet. Jesus is the son of God. Okay, thank you. Um, Brother Jai, um, do you want to make any comment on the um, preservation of the Quran? That um, yeah, uh, well, Richard, is make, uh, Richard is making a point regarding oh, if the meanings are changing, then that is a serious, serious issue. Yes. Yeah, so, so the, so the, so the, uh, welcome brother. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. And yes, the meanings definitely change. And in some cases, the meanings also contradict each other as well. We didn't get to all of the examples that we, that we could have, but there are examples of among the variants in the Quran, they contradict each other. So they can't both be right. And so we want to know from the Muslim side, which one is, in the preserved tablet, the one that says this one or the one that says that one and the one that says that one or the one that says this one. And the answer that we've gotten so far from the Sheikh is that this is in the realm of the unseen. Only Allah knows basically. So they don't know the answer. Yeah. Uh, that's, those are my comments. Uh, yeah. And uh, also the like main argument, uh, Mr. Muslim or Islamic Dawah gangs make is Quran dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, word by word is exactly the same wherever you go in the world. What Muhammad received uh, to, today. So that's the claim is being made. And um, what we are seeing is, and what we are reading from Islamic tradition, actually that claim was full of lies and then people still continue to lie. Uh, we were focusing on what is the, um, Muslims are trying to find answer to the question so what is it in the eternal tablet? Which version of the Quran eternal tablet contains? And answer was like in a gentle way of saying, oh, well, I don't know. So that was the response from Islamic Dawah gangs. Um, Richard, hey, a quick comment, sister. 
uh, before yes, we go on, I just want to say a quick comment. If it's dot by dot, then the preserved tablet must be written in a script that has the dots, right? So maybe, maybe. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm still trying to find an answer to this question. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, but it's in that mind. sense, you will be asking the question of, so when you look at the uh, history, you see Arabic alphabet is developed with the timing. First, they have the consonantals, and then you've got the vowels, like which version of the dot, dotted version of the Quran. Right. In the, like, yeah, that, that's a good yeah, point. There are different another, versions. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I, I guess that, that's another, a whole, like you said, it's a whole other question and we don't want them to practice the sunnah or anything like that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, give them, give them enough time. Um, Richard, did you have any last point to make for us? Um, I'd like to say that um, I was glad to see that, um, that you was fine after the attack that you went, you was uh, subjected to in the park. And um, I'm glad to see that you're okay. And uh, I think the job you do is fantastic. Thank, thank, and, thank, uh, you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much, thank you very much, brother. By God's you're grace, welcome. by God's grace, um, we are all good. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. God bless you, brother. Um, we've got someone else on the line. Um, hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Can you tell us who are you? Are you Muslim? Are you Christian? I'm an ex-Muslim. You are ex-Muslim. Um, yeah. Can you tell me Muhammad is false prophet? Yeah, Muhammad was not, not a prophet. <laughs> okay. Um, so we are talking about the preservation of the Quran, and especially we are Muslims are asking the question, which version of the Quran is in the eternal tablets? What have you got to share with us on that topic? And then after that, yeah, I will um, be asking you, why are you ex-Muslim? Sure. Um, it's a it's a great question to ask, and um, you're right. I don't think there is an answer to the question. Um, I think this whole idea of the Quran being preserved is flawed on so many different levels and in so many different ways. As you guys are pointing out, I love the work that you guys do, both uh, you Hatun and and you Jay. Um, and I I uh, hope you guys continue doing what you're doing. Um, what I wanted to like um, ask or just share uh, uh, about the work that's being done currently in Australia. Like if you can maybe share some of uh, what is what is happening there. And then um, my, what, what I like, like a lot of Muslims will kind of defend the Quran um, based on um, saying that uh, the Rasam hasn't been changed and it's just the, the Qira that are different. And so I was wondering if you can maybe elaborate on some of the work that's being done yeah. to uh, talk about the Rasam yeah. and the difference in the actual Rasam. Yeah, I'll just make a quick comment. Um, so, Umar, um, first of all, when we look at the Islamic tradition, we get to see even when Uthman compiled the Quran um, in 652, when that Quran is being copied and then sent it to the different cities, there were razum differences between the Qurans which has been sent around. So I think it will be just double disgraceful if any Muslim is still making such a claim that razum is exactly the same. That is not the case. A um, couple of months ago, we even showed some examples where razums are different from one uh, manuscripts to other manuscripts, as well as there are... Um, different razums, different um, consonantal letters um, without dots um, in, in the Qurans as well. Yeah. Um, so that's, that, that's, that's something, um, that something uh, needs to be kind of um, be aware of, as well as um, Dan Brubaker put together um, examples after examples how there were differences within early manuscripts. So you've got Uthman's Qurans, as it's been copied and then sent out, there are razum differences. You've got mm -hmm. um, today's Qurans shows that there are razum differences between them, like words are missing or in some Qurans the word is there. And then also manuscripts evidence shows us that there are um, razum differences. Um, okay. uh, yeah, Dan Baker's material is very, very helpful as well as um, Islamic tradition. Even Tayyar Al-Tuklaj's material is very helpful where he 
puts forward some differences as well. Um, Brother Jai, um, do you want to add anything on this at this stage? Yeah. Now, now when we go pre Uthman, as you said, you can show differences. Clearly, there's differences in the Rasum, and Muslims wouldn't necessarily disagree with that either. They might just say these are these are part of the Ahruf, whatever those mm -hmm. are. They there are different Muslims with different theories on that. But after after this canonization or, or canonization for Uthman, uh, this official codex that there, or codices that he made, scholars have noted that there are differences even in the Rasam between these different codices. So, for example, the one sent to Syria, for example, they'll classify uh, the one sent to all, all the different regions that they're sent to. There are what people today, scholars today, call scribal errors. Now, older Muslim scholars, like uh, you have um, Ibn Abi Dawood, um, Adani, they, they, they mentioned in their, in their books these regional, they call them like, they didn't call them regional differences. That's what people call them today. But they, they would note differences. For example, like the famous one that we talk about here a lot is there's like the missing huwa in the verse. The one like that the, is the word huwa there or not. This is a rasam difference. So yeah. Yeah. there are many like that. I think there's upwards of around 40 different examples more than yeah. that. As uh, Different scholars give different counts. You have Michael Cook. He has this kind of, he's the one who gave this whole theory on the, Regional variants, Shali Nasser notes them, um, Haitham Sidki mm -hmm. notes them. So these are different modern scholars you can go to to talk, uh, to talk about these Rasm differences between the different readings today. Yeah, okay, that's great. <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, helpful to, um, you know, hear about that um, as a reminder. Like, yeah, I know that you guys have talked about it, but maybe it's just, uh, it's not as talked about as the differences in the Kira the recitations that are out there. Um, so we have, and... um, what we are saying is reputation is important. So we we'll repeat mm -hmm. again and again, and then hopefully mm -hmm. they will have proper response as we kind of repeat. We can go through resume differences and then make a live stream about it or even put short videos regarding that. We kind of looked at in the past. Um, Umar, just a practical question. Are you, um, mm -hmm. you, you expressed yourself as an ex-Muslim? Um, yeah. Are you, just ex-Muslim atheist, agnostic, or are you um, ex-Muslim who is Christian now? I'm an ex-Muslim, um, I guess you could say agnostic or okay. atheist, yeah. So um, why did you, can you be kind enough and tell us why did you give up Islam? And what is your reason today that you are not Christian? Um, I, uh, I think it's uh, a lot to do with um, my personal personality. I'm... Um, I guess I'm not someone who uh, cares about uh, belonging to a group uh, necessarily. I, I seek out the truth wherever it may be, and um, I'm willing to, you know, uh, you know, drop a community if I have to, um, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I had friends and stuff, and, you know, I still have some friendships, but I've lost many of them because of my, um, you know, my beliefs now. Um, so it was, uh, probably around 10 years ago that I, um, uh, like left Islam and, um, it was basically because of, uh, research and, uh, discussions. I used to read a lot and, uh, I think the internet ha plays a huge role, just the ac access to all the free information out there just, uh, opens your eyes to, you know, um, all the different think thoughts and uh, ideas out there, and so you know, I used to read a lot of them, uh, answering uh, answering Islam, answering Christianity. Uh, I used to go back and forth between those websites. I used to go through um, Islamic awareness website, and you know, I just used to read, you know, read a lot, and and uh, just slowly, slowly chip, chipped away at my belief, even though I wanted to hold on to it. It just, it just couldn't. Um, after uh, fighting so many different things. So in, ca in case yeah. people are not aware of the ch um, web page you are mentioning, Answering Islam is um, the page by Act 17 Apologetics. Answering Christianity is a polemist um, page where it is all about like attacking Christian faith and Christians and even Christian missionaries. Islamic awareness is 
um, another website which they usually stole other people's material and then put it there. Both of them are mainly focused on uh, how to deal with um, Christian missionaries, how to deal with the, it's supposed to be how to deal with their objections. Um, but as you kind of looked into them, they cause you to give up Islam. You are not satisfied by what you yeah. read, correct? Yeah, yeah. There's just there's just too many too many issues, too many problems. Like, um, and it just it's hard to hold on to uh, hard, hard to hold on to your belief if you if you really are seeking truth. You know, like a lot of people, they're comfortable. Like half, I would say half or more than half of Muslims are. Uh, culturally Muslim, they're Muslim by name, but Muslim just because you know that's that's what they know. Um, and then there's just a few that uh, are um, actually serious about Islam and 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 uh, study it, and and uh, they they are fooled basically by the uh, Islamic scholars, the apologi apologists uh, that uh, you know feed them a certain story, and and uh, you know I guess. If you if you think critically, you could see through uh, through all of it. You know, it's it's a, a lot of the there's so much out there that that's just basically either blatant lies or you know just uh, bad explanations, bad defenses against uh, Islam. Uh, you know, like just uh, Islam just doesn't stand um, and uh, critical thinking. So um, yeah, I uh, that's that's where. Uh, where I am today, and I'm just uh, always open to learning more and and discovering wherever the truth may be. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah. have you have you? So we not we heard your reasoning that you are not Muslim anymore. <laughs> you are not made for mm -hmm. Islam. Uh, <laughs> but that's that's the phrase um, another ex-Muslim told me on Sunday. He's he was not made for Islam. Um, what <laughs> is what is it? What is it keeps you like? Have you? Have you checked the um, biography of Lord Jesus Christ? Have you read the Bible? What are your reasons that you are not Christian today? So we can um, answer some of your objections. Um, well, I, I did read the Bible um, I, several, I think probably more than 10 years ago. Um, I have a few copies of the Bible. And um, I live in a Christian, con Christian uh, influenced country. Um, so I've, you know, I've been around Christians all my life, and uh, you know, um, I, I, I mean, in terms of uh, the issues that I have with religion um, in general, and in um, with the concept of uh, uh, God and uh, his, his attributes, or um, th those those things kind of flow across with other religions as well. So it's it's. You know, so, uh, um, instead of issues with the religions, what is your issue with Christ? What is your issue with Christian God? Like, what is your objection? Why you are not a Christian today? Um, I'm not so sure. I mean, I, 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 I used to, like I mentioned, I used to read a lot on, um, like, the inter-religious uh, arguments. And so, like, you know, I mentioned that one website. So there was a lot of you know things that I went through that were brought up. Um, I, a lot of it was, a, you know, I would admit there were probably stupid arguments, but there were some that, um, I mean, it's been a while since I've looked at that stuff. You know, I've kind of uh, uh, haven't been into too much of it um, uh, recently, but you know, those sorts of arguments that are out there, um, they make me question uh, Christianity as well as the fact that. Uh, um, there are a lot, a lot of uh, people leaving religion in general and Christianity specifically in the West. So, like that, those types of ideas uh, that um, that the, the data that's out there makes me uh, not really spend too much time, more more time into it. You know, uh, looking into it. So. Um, well, um, people, yeah. um, the 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 uh, the life we live is. Um, People simply change, um, I don't know, their beliefs or their feelings as often they change underwear. So therefore, I think it is not very, it is not very sure. wise to say, oh, because people are giving up the religions, therefore I'm not going to look into it. I think that's not very sure. wise things to do as well as, sure. um, 
I don't know. Um, Brother Jai, um, so we, um, Omar is on the line. He expressed that he is um, ex-Muslim and um, he gave us a couple of reasons. Um, and um, he's kind of, I'm not sure um, if I'm very clear regarding why he's not a Christian today. Um, Besides, like, he's got issues with religion as well as people in the West are living uh, faith, which I, I, I think that, that I wouldn't say that's the case because I know lots of people are turning to Lord Jesus Christ. But, Brother Jai, um, what have you got for us? What would you like to kind of comment or um, share? Um, I, I, I don't have much to add to what you were saying previously, but I will say that... Uh, how people live their lives should be tested against what the religion teaches. So if people are living their, their lives in a, in a certain way that reflects the teachings of Christianity, then that's good. And then you can test Christianity based on how accurately, you know, someone might be living out the Bible in a faithful sense or something like that. Mm -hmm. But someone who is leaving the faith or someone who is uh, living their lives in a hypocritical way, test how they live versus what the bible says and then if they're not being consistent with that then that's not a good witness or way to tell what christianity looks like sure yeah that's fair um you know I'm, I, i've been uh, been in touch with a few christians on uh these live show youtube shows recently and i promised that i you know re uh, visit the bible and uh yeah. so i will i will do that and you know just uh Make sure that I'm not missing out on anything that's uh, critical um, just, and important. Yeah, just read the biographies of Lord Jesus Christ and then put down your questions and then call in and then we discuss them because, yes, uh, we are happy that you left Islam. Islam is like seriously, seriously, just very dangerous ideology. But mm -hmm. uh, we know heart of our God is wants the people to turn to him. Uh, yeah. Those who identify Jesus as Messiah and the eternal Son of God, they will have eternal life with Him. So that's that's why we are here. Um, do since like we we don't lose our reading skills, we don't lose our research skills. So please do read the biographies of um, Jesus and then call in with your objections, and then we um, we discuss them. If that's okay. With okay. You. Well, thank you very okay. much for your time. And, yeah, and then we will do some um, short videos or live streams regarding the um, Razums, uh, different Razums in the early Qurans as well as today's Quran. Yeah, um, that thank would you be very awesome. much for reminding that us again. Thank you. Thank, and You're thank welcome. you very much for calling in. Um, Brother Jai, I must say, like, you've got this polite, welcoming skills, which I don't have it. So... I never kind of say, oh, thanks for calling him, blah, blah. Uh, you always kind of express that. So let me first say thank you. And I want, in case people will compare me with you, I just wanted to remind everyone, we are all unique and we are all different. God made us different and unique. So don't compare me with Jai's politeness. <laughs> um, okay, we've got um, another brother or a gentleman on the line. Let's say hi to him. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, hello, sir. Um, tell us sorry, who are you? Sorry, I'm very new to this app. Uh, I'm doing well. Um, I'm used to using StreamYard for my YouTube channel, so this one is okay. No worries, we are very new as well. We are just we used to have people on Skype, but now we are using this app. Um, sir, can you tell us who are you? Are you Muslim? Are you Christian? If you are Muslim, um, tell us what is in the eternal tablets. If you are Christian, please. Um, verbalize for us that Muhammad is false prophet and Jesus Christ is the eternal son of God and then we take it from there. Um, so I'm a Christian. Um, I have a Christian YouTube channel where I interview atheists, Muslims, and Christians. Um, I came on because I saw you guys were going live. I started to watch some of your videos a few weeks ago. I've appreciated them. I saw... What is Jai your YouTube channel called, sir? Oh, James is Tired. Is okay. the name of it. Yeah. And I wanted to say hello to Ja because I appreciated the review that he did with Chris Claus, another friend of mine, about a week ago on the Muhammad Hijab video. 
Uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I I remember I recognize you uh, from Clubhouse. We we met on there, so yeah, it's good to good to see you. Welcome to the stream. Um, so no, no, thanks for having me. That's okay, brother. Um, can you um tell us um what is your thoughts on since we are talking about the preservation of the Quran and which version is in the preserved tablets? Um, what have you got to share with us on that? So I, I was told initially, because I was in a, a chat with a lot of Muslims for a year, that the Quran was perfectly preserved. But when I started looking um, that of my own accord, I found out that's not the case, that they didn't have a completed Quran until after Muhammad um, had died. And it wasn't even something they were supposed to necessarily pin together. Um, the seven modes, like uh, uh, the fact they had some Quran that was in the Quran, where they recited it while the prophet was alive and then they discontinued it um, after his death. So yeah, it's definitely not preserved. Okay. Uh, I don't know what happened, but Jai just left us. I hope that wasn't intentional. If he did intentional, we will deal with that. Um, we will deal with that in a bit. Um, okay. Um, so, have you kind of told in your discussions, uh, Brother James, did you have chance to talk about um, dif about the different Qurans with Muslims? Um, I have had a chance to, to talk about the different Qurans. Um, it's weird. It depends on who we talk to. Like the Quran only Muslims only recognize one, like the standard Uthmanic text. The Sunnis will um, say that there's seven different Qurans. But then I think the Haruf changes it again. I know I mispronounced that word, but so it's definitely varying. Okay, your sound is gone. Yeah, I muted because my, my gig came in the room because I did this okay. kind of impromptu and I... Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, then. Um, there are some informations which are not... Um, Fully true. Hopefully, we will deal with them in um, different in different platform where uh, where there was a kind of comments on the different Arabic. Um, sorry, um, there were comments of Sunnis uh, believe there are seven um, seven version of the Quran in that statement. Um, that needs to be kind of um, phrased as Allah revealed Quran in seven different ahruf which is um, today, no one knows what is Ahruf all about. Um, so that needs to kind of be dealt with. It's not only Sunnis, but that's for Sunnis and um, Shias. Um, so that's like overall um, tradition. So Shias believe the same thing. Um, have you got anything you want to kind of bring, anything else you want to bring our attention, Brother James? I, we did already um, mention your channel. Hopefully. If you wouldn't mind me just mentioning the video I'm going to do tomorrow, if that would be okay. Yeah, so you said your channel called um, James the Tired? Yeah. Yep, James is tired and I'm going to have a uh, apostate prophet on tomorrow. Okay. And we're going to be uh, looking into reasons why Islam is false. Okay, so um, if you have, a, have not kind of checked the channel out, please do so. And what time is that, sir, tomorrow? Uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, what time is that UK time? Um, I think but, that's so, uh, right, right, uh, right, 10 o'clock. 6, 6, 6, 7 o'clock uh, UK time. So um, if anyone wants to follow that up, please um, do. Sorry, sorry, out. 7 seven o'clock i'm still on i'm still on the other time zone yeah yeah that's fine so <laughs> i'm still thinking of before the time changes yeah yeah seven o'clock uk time um you can um check that out um what's happening um oh brother phil thank you very much for putting the kind of channel link here where people can just check that out mm, okay brother thank you very much for calling us in tonight then hopefully we will see you on different platforms yeah, and thank you very much for the videos you do. They've been very helpful. Um, I've definitely enjoyed them. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Brother. God bless you. Um, okay, so, um, Brother Joy, you left me, but we will deal with that in a bit. Let me just 
take this cola, Mr. P. This cola, Mr. P. Can you can you please make sure your can, YouTube is muted, you sir? Sure okay. Yeah, it seems it's muted now. Um, Just give me a second. Yeah, it seems it's muted now. No, it's not muted. Okay. So we will give him a second. By that time, I'm muting him. Or by that time, he's already left. Okay, let's move to the next caller. Uh, unmute the caller first. Okay. Um, you are you muted yourself. Can you please unmute yourself? Hello. Hello, sir. I am not able to hear you, sir. Therefore, I am hanging up. And then I've got. Hello. Connie, you are you muted yourself. Can you unmute yourself, please? Hello. Okay, I am not getting respond from that because guest has muted themselves. I can't do much about it when you mute yourself. Um, I'm guessing you are just trying to work out how the app is working. By God's grace, hopefully we will fix that. Brother Jai, why did you leave me? Yeah, my connection is uh, getting weak, so hopefully I don't disconnect again, but that's what happened. My connection uh, failed on me. So what we are seeing from that is people will let you down. People will leave you, but Lord Jesus Christ will never let you down and will never leave you. Yes, so people will let you down. That. Internet. People will let you down. Internet providers <laughs> will let you down, but the Lord Jesus will never let you down. Um, okay, I think we will stop here um, because callers just left the stream. Um, would you be kind enough, brother, just to summarize once again what we discussed and then we will finish from that, if that's okay with you. Right. Yeah. So we went over a clip of an interview from 2016 between the Dawah gangs and a sheikh that they brought on. In this interview, the question was asked, when Christians come to us and they ask us, which is written in the preserved tablet this version or that version or this one or that one or this one or that one or... the answer to the question from the sheikh is or was that this is in the realm of the unseen this is something that we don't have access to essentially he's saying that he doesn't know so Hello, this is sorry. this is the this is the question that we were asking and that was the answer that that you guys really received that speaker's corner about uh <laughs> about five years back now so uh so that that was what and, and then fast forward um you know they they had a they had four year four years later another interview with another sheikh who gave some more dissatisfying responses to the question okay so um basic answer to the question question is very basic what is there are different crowns there are different crowds what is it in the preserved tablets answer is allah knows nothing probably knows best we don't know um let me we will take this call because the person called um person called before called um, before um, hello sir hello sir hello um, I am hearing echo. Um, Can you make sure echo. I am Can not hearing the echo? echo? Well, you muted yourself. Okay. Okay. So okay. It's it. I, I'm still hearing I'm echo. Still echo. Hearing echo. So YouTube might be playing. YouTube might be playing. Or you need to use headphones. You need to use headphones. Okay. Let me try that. I will call if I can not. Okay, Sorry. I think um, okay, I'll think, encourage you to call um, in tomorrow, tomorrow is live stream. Tomorrow is live stream. 
Um, we, we, we've got live stream tomorrow evening for open Skype at 8 o'clock. Um, we will give you a chance to call in. Um, then we can simply finish um, tonight's live stream. Um, so, question was... Um, question was, uh, what, which version of the Quran is in the eternal tablets? Um, and then answer is, we don't know. So that's been question, that question is being kind of circulating in Islamic world or Islamic da between Islamic Dawah gangs since 2016. So can we just be kind enough and then make sure we continue to ask the question until we get proper answer and help Muslims to even answer that question? Um, huge thank you to everyone who called in and I'm sorry that some of technical issues kind of took place but by God's grace um, hopefully you will be able to fix them for tomorrow evening and we will have open Skype night and also we can talk about other uh, business related things and Brother Joy uh, not only thank you very much for joining us tonight but also thank you very much for being very kind and very polite in almost all of my streams and then just the things I miss you always step in and verbalize that so huge thank you for that as well and huge thank you to everyone who joined us in the chat um, thank you for your contributions and your comments may Christ crucified silently with his love and dear Muslim friends we pray that you will turn to him it's always good to hear there are people who are giving up islam they are not made for islam they are not made for allah they are not made for muhammad but our prayers that you will turn to lord jesus christ and he he opens his arms and he wants you home um, that's in not god bless you all we will see you tomorrow evening for eight o'clock by god's grace jai thank you very much brother